Thank you. Um, so when, when I was asked to do this talk, I, I, um, I'm generally used to like talking about some very specific things that we are trying to do in, inside the data center, uh, whether it be around white box switching or uh, Open 19 or like different rack designs, we'll get a bunch of stuff. But I was pretty excited about this one because it, it, it was more like, hey, how did you make this transition? And generally, you don't get to tell the story uh, about how you sort of got from one place to the other. So, so my point here is just to sort of give you an idea of what things we went uh, to think about when we, uh, you know, went, went scaling from, from like a traditional enterprise thinking to sort of a, how do we support hundreds and thousands of machines and like really thinking about hyperscale network, right? So I'll tell you, you know, it all starts obviously from traffic, right? We all run, um, uh, who, all of us who run data centers always are intrinsically looking at traffic. So inside LinkedIn data centers, you know, the traffic demands over time has, has grown tremendously, right? Uh, and, and what's interesting about like content companies like us is that when you have sort of one byte of, of data that comes uh, from say north, south, you know, from the internet, inside the data center, it spans. 10x, right? So because the way the applications are built, there's an uh, enormous call graph and it goes and spans across data centers, uh, inside and across, and, and, and that creates an enormous amount of traffic, right? So the other thing is that we move tons of metrics inside the data center. It's in the billions per second, right? Uh, we have uh, offline jobs processing, we have machine learning uh, algorithms that are going, seeking across networks, uh, trying to get a bunch of data, lots of replication, all these things add uh, to the amount of traffic. And all of this, this machinery is you know, impacting our sort of, you know, close to half a billion users that we have out there. So one of the things that, that our developers talk about, and, and I was talking to uh, uh, well, a, a couple of, uh, of, my, uh, of my colleagues in, in the development side, they, you know, a few years back, we were, you know, they would write a piece of software and they would say, you know, I need X number of machines, right? Uh, but we quickly realized that that type of thinking just slows down a developer. You know, like what we wanted to create was basically uh, infrastructure uh, across the board, and not, not just talking about racks and servers. I'm talking about even a little bit higher level than that. That it is completely invisible to the developer. They should not care about it. It should be extremely simple to use. It should be um, elastic. It should scale automatically. The developer shouldn't have to think about, you know, oh, you know, how many how many uh, calls do I have? Do I have to, you know? go and change uh, a few of the parameters. No, all these things should happen automatically, right? Uh, there isn't a single point of failure. Like it's always available. So these are the things that we wanted our developers to sort of go with. Like, you know, you can you know, get things on demand. So when you start sort of thinking about that, uh, at LinkedIn, we created something called LinkedIn Platform as a Service. It's all internal cloud. So think of a developer, you know, who just puts in a little bit of a blueprint information and then, you know, uh, ships that information out. Uh, we have a system called, called Rain and Race, and it, you know, says, hey, you know, I'm, I now know all this information and I'm going to go and find the best server or, or servers for you uh, based on your compute and your storage demand uh, in, in, in general. And then it goes out and, and sort of populates that. And then once it's out there, you've developed these pieces of software, you don't think about it at all. Just let it be, right? And then you have, uh, we have another feature which, which just basically auto scales it uh, based on the demand of the application. And, and uh, at that point, um, uh, we have tons of metrics and, and alerting mechanisms that basically scale the application on the back end. So this is kind of like our sort of view into our internal cloud and how we serve uh, the request that you were asking for, I think the previous gentleman just said, like, you know, if you're asking and looking for a job. So, so when we sort of think about that, you know, the, when the problem comes to, like, on our side, on the infrastructure side of the house, uh, what does that translate to? So when I look at something like that, uh, you know, the team sort of has to say, okay, well, are we building to, to sort of some very specific things? The, 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 the challenge that I, I always uh, have my team do is think, think of a much broader vision. So we basically sat down and said, in order to sort of get to a hyperscale model, you have to think about uh, unlimited bandwidth. That means developers should not have to ever think about how much bandwidth do I have in order to make my application work. They should always think it's unlimited. They should be thinking that there's no latency. There's, there's, they can get whatever they want, and we will make sure that it's there. Uh, the compute is on demand. 
the, the, the part the, 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 that we thought of is that it should be a completely disaggregated model to give us more and more control of our destiny. Uh, we came up with this concept called programmable data center, and I'll touch a little bit in depth about it uh, uh, as we go along the slides. And then the other one is self-healing, where as we scale the infrastructure, if something breaks, you know, you don't run to fix it, it should auto-heal, right? And that, these are some of the principles that we sort of took. So out of that, we created our flagship design called Altair, which uh, there's been some numerous blogs on it, but I'll quickly go into it. We looked at it as uh, ability that as we build, we need to future-proof it from 10 to 100 gig capability to the host, right? Uh, we took a different approach where we, um, uh, at our scale, we, we don't have the ability, to, we, we don't do greenfield data centers, we do go and buy wholesale space. Uh, so that limits us uh, to have like, you know, enormous amounts of data center space. So we do dense compute where we try to pack more servers in a rack. So we pack up to 96 hosts in a rack. Um, we um, decided that we will move into the single chip switching. That means no chassis in the network. Uh, we want to be able to support 200 gigs between uh, the cabinets. Uh, and of course, non-blocking parallel fabric. Uh, and we're trying to get subscriptions down to less than six to one. Uh, and then the other one is uh, our own uh, um, venture into uh, uh, what we call the, fa the Falco fabric base, which is, which is our own uh, switch design. Uh, so when, you, when we sort of looked at these things, we said, well, how do you scale these things out, right? Um, so when we scale out our data centers across, uh, we have you know, numerous of them across the U.S., uh, they should be you know, simple. Our design approach is that they should be simple, uh, non-blocking IP fabric. Uh, we want to be able to uh, do multiple parallel fabrics on, on cross network architecture, uh, and I'll, I'll go a little bit depth into, into what I mean by that. Uh, and we also uh, took this stance that the merchant silicon uh, should have least amount of features. We don't want unnecessary features. We don't want to be uh, putting things inside the network where we, we don't even use them, but then we have to you know, deal with the bugs or the support and all the other things, right? So that, that was kind of one of the things. Uh, distributed control plane with, with some centralized control. Uh, the other one is wide multi ECMP, right? We want to be able to go across the fabric uh, uh, and not have to go traverse uh, cores anymore. So they are, that, that's sort of one of the characteristics. And then uniform chipset bandwidth buffering, low latency and small buffering requirements was sort of one of the things we talked about as we sort of scale out. So what do you do when you try to get to a hyperscale? You kill the damn chassis no more chassis. So we took a very, very uh, hard stance on this, that we will do single skew. That means that one U is the entire fabric, one skew. My bomb is like this big, right, for a network that is pretty massive. So uh, uh, we said, uh, because if you want to get to the scale of going down to minimum number of chipsets where your packet is traversing less than five chipsets, if you put cores in it and firewalls and load balances and all these things, they will add to your latency. So introducing parallel fabrics, right? That is kind of like one of the key things that we did. So think of each tour, and we have a single tour. Each tour is four-way ECMP path out, and there are four fabrics. We color our fabrics, uh, and each of those fabrics are not at all connected to each other. They are totally independent. Right? We have one-to-one -one, uh, uh, over subscription across the fabric uh, using minimum number of chip, chip sets to carry east-west traffic. I think that in the early days, I calculated we were doing like hitting like each packet was hitting like 15 to 20 chip sets, and now we have it down to less than five chip sets server to server. Um, the, the principle here in the fabric is that you are able to support 100,000 plus bare metal servers without adding any additional fabric layer. Um, and it should support up to 64 pods, uh, and each pod has 32 cabs, uh, and each of the cabs has 90, 96 bare metal, as I had mentioned before. Uh, and then the, the fabric is limited to you know, a three-tier typical five-stage class, uh, and the whole data center is, uh, is, is you know, minimizing its chipset uh, to reduce the latency. And then, and then at the host layer, as I'm going down, 
you know, I'm supporting 10, 25, 50, and 100. At this point, we are largely doing uh, 10, 25. We are open to 50, but I haven't seen a lot of use cases yet for 50. And 100, I think, is, uh, I mean, we've built the infrastructure for it. It would be nice if the kernel gets there. I think we'll, we'll, that'll be fun. Um, so this is a three-dimensional view of the same network. What I wanted to really show here is that how we, we've built our planes and how they're spread across. Uh, so if you were to traverse from, say, part one to part 64, you're, uh, in this architecture, uh, you're looking at a switching of 2.5 microsecond, right? So what, what other, uh, so in the future proofing uh, aspect, we, we also did a 100 gig transformation uh, late, sort of early last year, and we were a little bit on the cutting edge of it. It was just out the Tomahawk uh, uh, platform, and uh, uh, so what we did was we, we, as I talked about the single SKU, so all our spine and all our fabric is that one SKU. Uh, um, you can think of like, uh, I think it's like the Cisco 3232C is one of them, and, and there's a number out there, and we also have uh, our own that's sort of blended there. Uh, and um, and uh, basically what we did is we, we did 100 gig uh, across the fabrics, as you can see between the spine and, and with 50 gig lakes connecting uh, spine to the fabric. Now the tour uh, is we, we decided to do 50 gig uh, each path, so four times 50, right, uh, four paths of 50. And the way we did that was we used PSM4, so we could split each of 100 gig to, to 250 gigs. Um, then the next thing I want to talk, to talk about, which is what I mentioned earlier, is, is, the, is, uh, is our desegregation, right? So earlier last year, we, we, we kind of opened up uh, and really got into, into the desegregation space where we got ODM platform and we put our own Linux, uh, NAS, and, and, um, and then we're working on the application layer. What's interesting is that we, we were really more focused on figuring out how do we just separate the, 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 the two. And this was like sometime early last year, we were very new into the, into the phase. So we looked at like, hey, let's build an, uh, our own NAS, whether we get a, uh, a third party, where we get open source, and try to just figure out how to do the ODM space and it, it opened up a new world for us. But it also taught us a lot of things. It taught us that, um, you know, spending a lot of time on the lower level, uh, you know, uh, between your ASIC, your ONI, and all your HAL, you know, these things take a lot of developer time. Uh, what our team was more interested in, because we built a five-stage class network, we had different sets of problems. We had to deal with alpha and mice pro issues, uh, uh, ECMP not being equal path, so those things, can you have to think application a little bit more, more on the control plane. So we started to spend a little bit more time and then found that the low level part was a little bit of a pain. So we transformed our disaggregation model into something we call now open fabric. We don't really care about the NAS. We actually say that, look, we can just pick one. Like, you know, there's so many, there's a few people out there, you know, that are doing this. They're great. They're taking care of the low-level stuff. We'll, we'll either, you know, use them or we can interchange them when we want. Uh, and, and, you know, as long as they work with the hardware that we want, that's fine. What we really want to focus on is in the control plane. We want to be able to look at distribution of reach, reachability, right? Fast, simple distribution control plane. Uh, we don't want... Uh, 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 you know, crazy amount of features. We just want one or two things that we need for it to do. But what we want is auto discovery. Basically, what that means is, I envision a data center in, uh, te technician taking a switch, plugging it in, and turning the power on, and it knows whether it's a spine or a leaf. Right? I don't have to configure it even uh, a little bit of it. It knows how to connect to it, um, and it's, so it's topology aware. Uh, it knows how to auto-discover neighbors, uh, and then all the policy is a little bit more centralized, uh, and where possible, we use uh, our own uh, pipeline system called Kafka, and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing over there. But basically, the idea of our disaggregation, or our next step into disaggregation is that um, 
And it makes you really think, rethink the network stack, right? It makes you think about uh, your forwarding plane a little bit differently. You know, how do you do link selection? Uh, how do you do topology discovery? Uh, you know, how do you think about, uh, you know, rethink your telemetry scenarios, your, you know, how, what, what you can do. There's a whole world of opportunity for you to do a lot of different things on the application side. Uh, like I was saying, like self-healing, you know, predicting failures, all these kind of things that, that you can add on to the control plane. So we want to spend a lot of time on that. Um, I'm running a little bit out of time, so I'm trying to get through. Uh, what I wanted to show here was that, you know, like we, we've, uh, we've got this philosophy that our network folks, they don't really want to, to, they don't care about SNMP anymore. They don't want to deal with syslog. So we said, okay, then let's not pull this stuff. Let's not put the stress on the control plane. Let's stream everything uh, using Kafka. Uh, and then we, we send everything through a pipeline. And then our stuff is stored in Hadoop somewhere. And we were able to do all kinds of uh, amazing magic on it, which is basically this. And that's basically a programmable data center is that what that means is that we take all of the telemetry and we push it through a pipeline and then we can do all kinds of processing, machine learning on top of it. And those things are your network management aspects. So you don't think of network management by, by polling, you think of it sort of like just using streaming telemetry. And you can use that to, to either monitor the network or you can build feedback mechanisms and say, I'm going to apply this action. So that's sort of the future of where we are going. And I think on that note, I'm just about in time. In closing, you know, people generally say, you know, why, why do you build your, your, your own switch? Why do you want to do all this? And, and my answer that, to that is it's not about the fact that we want to become experts in this, right? It's that because we see that it's, it's, it's a massive advantage to control the destiny of our infrastructure. If we control the destiny of infrastructure, it directly impacts how you are able to use our application in, in the fastest and easiest manner. So, uh, any questions? Yes. I have a question for you. Um, you guys were acquired by Microsoft. I'm wondering how that might change your strategy and whether you guys are going to be moving to Azure. So, um, the question, if people didn't hear, is about uh, Microsoft uh, because of the acquisition. Are we going to change our strategy or not? Um, so, my, my, my answer to that is uh, LinkedIn will, will continue to, to uh, uh, to manage and control its own infrastructure. Uh, we are uh, doing this for our member base. Uh, at this point, uh, we will continue to do what we are doing. And at the future time, uh, uh, things may change, but that's uh, yet to be decided. What do you use for your distributed control plane? For our distributed control plane? Uh, so for, can you be a little bit more specific? Ah, for that, that level. Okay, so got it. So, uh, yes, so we are doing BGP to the Tor. Uh, and what we are doing there is actually the Open Fabric is now a draft uh, at ITF, if you want to take a look at it. Uh, basically, what we are trying to do is use uh, label management in there to figure out how to do the traffic. So, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, everyone.